Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl SJ here with Real Beauty, Real Food, and Real Life. Today, we are going to be making a peach cobbler. And here are the items I'm going to start off using. And we're going to start off with a saucepan and melt almost all of this butter. So let's get started. I'm making a small amount. Oh, shit. Hold on. Did I just cuss? I don't know if that counts off. But you know what? It's real life, you guys. I ain't got no dough. So our key ingredient right here is butter tasting biscuits. Yeah! To make our peach cobbler. Now let's get started. Alright, so here's our pan we're going to use because I don't have any smaller pots. You know, put our butter in here and melt it down. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl SJ here with Real Beauty, Real Food, and Real Life. Today I am going to be making a peach cobbler. I felt like I wanted to make peach cobbler. And I'm about to share that with you. Um, first of all, this is going to be my flouring board. Because I don't have no flour. That's the first problem I got. So that's why I'm going to be making it with biscuits. Alright, so as we get started go over a few things so I have melted some butter you use a stick I'm not making a big one so I just use a little bit less than a stick because I'm gonna save that for extra stuff why did I just sit on top of there I have no clue but I I'm just showing you what I'm going to be doing <laughs> all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up my mixture so I'm gonna, this is gonna be my thickening, as well as the butter flavor in the peaches. All right, so I am going to start with a little bit of cornstarch. Cornstarch is used to thicken up anything <laughs> that's liquid. We're going to average that out to about a tablespoon, and I'm adding it to the butter. Cornstarch is the hardest thing to mix up. A lot of people do it while it, everything's cooking on the stove, but I still be seeing the lumps in it. So I want to make sure... I get it mixed in first, and a lot of times people have already got the peaches in there before they mix it up. Okay, so I want it to be a little thicker than that, but it, it will get thick as it cooks. So I'm just going to dump a little bit more, and that's it. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and, let's go in order. What the heck? Add my vanilla. Usually you use about a teaspoon of vanilla. And usually, depending on the size of the bottle, the teaspoon is the lid. Because vanilla isn't a lot. It doesn't take a lot. Especially when it's real vanilla. I picked up out of the States. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix this on up in there. I know why I'm not mixing with this when I got a dang on spatula, spatula to mix with. I have no clue. There we go. Don't that less 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 of that. Get it out. You know, with it, they keep stirring and stirring and stirring a little hot tea. You're gonna get it melted down like that. Now, of course, this works really good on the stove, but I didn't want to put all my stuff over there yet. All right, I'm going to add just a little bit of nutmeg. And 
And of course, it ain't open. Thank God I keep a pair of scissors by. Just a little bit of nutmeg. Nutmeg can be overbearing, so you don't want to add too much. It looked like I might have added a lot, but I didn't. All right, you want to mix that on in. Now, it's, of course, starting to look like it's all separating again, but it would probably do better, like I said, if I had it on the fire, but I'm doing my demo right here on the counter here. Now, I do not have cinnamon, but I do have the Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which basically is a mixture of cinnamon and sugar. So I'm going to add some of that in there. Not too much, but just enough because it does have sugar already in it. All right. And just in case you're like me, you might forget, move that stuff over to the side that you already put in it. All right, next we're gonna be using peaches. So I'm not trying to make a huge one. Mm. Eh. You ever get to a point where you can't open up these? Well, they have this. Where is it at? I already got it open now. This right here, they sell them at the dollar store. You can pick one up. And it just opens it right on up. All right. So now, this is when I'm going to have to use my spoon first. My slotted spoon. To get the peaches in there. Well, I'm making a little peach cobbler. So I don't want to get too much peaches in there. And then you're supposed to pour a little juice in there. Now, if you're using cans, you would take one can full of the juice and the other can you would drain it. All right, now that we got that in there, we can sit that over to the side. Lastly, is some sugar. Now that's up to you how much sugar you choose to use. Usually a half a cup is sufficed. Um, I'm gonna use, try to use a little bit less than a half a cup, mostly because of that cinnamon that I have that has sugar in it already. But remember, how do you know how much to put in there? You can taste it. So this is that light, I like light brown better than the dark brown. So that's probably about a quarter of a cup. Because remember, you can always add to it, but if you put too much, you don't want, you ain't gonna be able to take away. Now I'm making sure I get all the little lumps out of there, but I forgot to put something else in there. See, I didn't even check everything I needed before I started. Shame on me. Huh. This is how things work. This is real life, you guys. Um, the only other thing I would have added was a little bit of lemon juice. I like it fresh. I would have used the lemon. And I just used my last lemon earlier today. All right. See how that's looking? Now, I'm going to go ahead and sit this on the stove so it can cook up, cook down. I want to cook down my sugars. Now, now that I made a mess right here, let me rinse this off again. any flour again I don't so I'm using this as my non-stick and I'm gonna roll some biscuits out as soon as I figure out how to open them it 
See, I wanted some peach cobbler, and there's a a cobbler factory nearby, but I'm like, you know what? No, I don't wanna I don't wanna have to be chose what to eat. Spend eight dollars and then I don't like it that well or so. Alright, so this is two biscuits cut in half. You'll take your roller and roll out the best that you can. Again, I don't have flour. So this is the consequences you get when you don't have no flour. You got to work with what you got to work. Now you can just do it by hand. But what the heck? I'm not. I'm here to make this work. Now this is a five can biscuit because remember I'm not making a whole lot. I can't expect it to be perfect. I hope you guys can see that. I didn't even think to look. My bad. Do the best you can rolling it out. It could roll out even more if I had flour, like I said. But I don't. So you gotta make do with what you got. Now the next thing is to get you a pan to put it in. And give me just a second, I'm gonna pick a pan. In a mini money mo. Catch a tiger by his toe. Hmm. All right. Yep, I'm using a weird one, but that's okay. I think this is gonna be better because it's individualized. Whew. Here's what I have rolled out already, just in case you couldn't see it. Now I'm gonna spray. If you can flatten them out better, that'd be great. If you like me and you can't, then you gotta work with what you got. I'm gonna put them in these little containers here. Again, I only have five biscuits because it's just me eating this. So I'm gonna spread them around. Did I do that right? Okay, so that's only two biscuits. Is that right? Yeah. So. Try to get it around the sides as much as you can, especially if you like the crust. That's what I got so far. Back to the drawing board. I just have three biscuits left. All right, so I eat again, splitting them all in half. Now, if you don't have a rolling pin, most people don't believe in that. You can sit there and try to do it by hand. Less sticking. <laughs> Just when I say less sticking, there it goes sticking. If you're cooking for other people, I suggest you use gloves. I'm just cooking for me. So I'm not using gloves because any hair that falls in this damn bit, this, this stuff, that's going to be mine. But I definitely make sure I wash my hands pretty decent. All right. So that's the three biscuits left. Let me check my mixture. It was on low. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher now. I don't know if you like crust or not, but I know I do. So, while we're waiting on that to go, I'm going to wash my hands real quick and start putting things away. This is how you keep the kitchen a little cleaner so it don't be super messy when you're done. Clean as you go.
Okay, so I got a thing for you guys. Did you know the proper way to wash your hands when you go to the bathroom is to wet your hands first? And when you put the soap on, you don't go right up under the water. You wait until you already got some on there. And you can actually see if you have any dirt on your hand. A lot of it you can see. And then rinse it off. Because if you put the soap on, how are you getting your hands clean? If you put it under water right after that. This makes real sense. I'm just saying. And like if I'm traveling, after I dry my hands, I will take the wet towel, hopefully they got paper towels, and I will wipe off my luggage handle that I might be carrying. Reason being is that I just walked out a bathroom with my luggage in my hand, then I'm gonna wash my hands and then I'm gonna put my hands back on that piece of luggage. Guys, it makes sense. All right, uh-oh, talking to you guys. This stuff started cooking. Yeah, it's getting thick like I like it. All right, give me just a second. I'm gonna bring it back on over here. Oh, wait, before I do that, because I'm gonna do one pour at a time. I'm gonna do a pour. I'm gonna go ahead and, I got three biscuits left. How do we do this? All right, so we do there. That leaves me five. So I only have five, remember? You can spread it out. There you go. Now for my mixture. As you guys can see, look at that. Nice and thick. All right. Yeah, I didn't finish putting stuff away, did I? <laughs> All right, let me go back to my spoon. Now this is like my cast iron pan, so it's actually heavy. So I'm just gonna scoop the peaches in. So I don't know how much I really got. So what I do is I take one big scoop and go to each one of them. Then I go back and try to get another scoop. I'm thinking I should have two scoops per pan, but we'll see. Oh yeah, it's nice and thick like I like it. I like my, I like my peach cobbler thick and with crust. All right, now that was enough for two scoops for each one of them. So I kind of planned it out pretty good. Um, you know what? I might, I might need that. It's this grape, we'll see. So now I'll go back and look for the ones that still got a little white showing. All right, so pretty much got it almost all out of there. You get down to the last part of it. And that's it there. Now, just a little bit left. Woo. And a lot of butter left. So you guys, um, now when I'm streaming this, I stream it to my YouTube page and a lot of times I stream it to my, uh, Twitch account and Facebook. So I don't know which platform you might be looking at, but I did want to let you guys know that. Um, so like sometimes if you have questions, more than likely I'll catch it on the YouTube page. Okay. All right. So now let's get back. Now here's what we got. 
Hope you guys can see that. All right, so now you're gonna stretch it out, put the hole in the middle, cause these are angel food pans. So uh, rum cake pans, just depends on what you use them for. I'm gonna straighten that out. Cook it lower than normal because um, a lot of times if you don't cook it, too, if you cook it too fast, the bottom, which has already got stuff on it, may not get fully done. I know you've had part where sometimes the dough ain't done, but you want to make sure you cook it slow enough so the dough can get done. All right, you guys see, got the tops on there. Now, I have some leftover butter. You want to make sure this stuff can breathe. It is breading. So you wanna put your little kind of cuts in it if you can. Sometimes it just don't work with you. So when it don't wanna work with you, if you have a block of knives, usually they come in with some scissors. This is food scissors. Cut it in there. Cut it in there so it can breathe and get done. So um, while I'm doing this, uh, one of the questions I have for you guys, and you guys are welcome to comment below, let me know your thoughts. If you're mad at somebody and they give you something, I don't care how mad you are, you can still reach out and say thank you, whether you call them or whether you text them or not. And I think that's pretty crazy where people seem to think, and they know who they are, that they're the victim. You're a victim because you chose to be a victim. Because when somebody sends you something, somebody gives you something and you least expect it, you say thank you. I don't care if you do have a relationship with them and you're mad, you still can reach out and say thank you. It should never be that bad. You should never be in that position where you feel like somebody is mad at you. And then out of the kindness of their heart, they take time out and they send you something. And I had to get on my brother about that. And it really, it really pissed me off because he felt like he was the victim. Nigga, you, you, you the victim. Excuse my language. That, that's, that came out wrong. Man, you the victim. You're not the victim. No. The victim is the person that thought about you more than you think about them to take time out of their busy lifestyle and reach out and say, let me send somebody something. Let them know I'm still thinking about them. Whether they're mad at me or not talking to me or whatever the case may be. And I'm, I really am mad that he couldn't find that he was the one in the wrong. When somebody sits there and calls or sends you something, letting you know you think about it. Because you know what? That same person that they, that they sent it to don't think about anybody else but their own self. Or unless they're trying to, to do something for somebody else and they need help. And their stuff is not right. And that's just all I'm going to say about that. Now, as you guys can see, I did uh, cut up the, the little dough on top. So I'm hoping it, it cooks like it's supposed to. Um, if you want to find out what this looks like, um, I'll probably put it on here or I'll put it, definitely put it on my Snapchat. I'll try to, try to get out here and do a video, I mean something, so you guys can see it. And we're going to start cooking on this now. So it's definitely going to be buttery. I love it like that. I want it buttery and flaky. And I always try to wash my hands when I hear it touch some of the stuff that I put in my cabinets. 
because when you don't wash your hands and you have food on it, it attracts bugs. So don't give them a reason to have a real will to live. I'm going to add a little cinnamon on this. And you guys, I made this without tasting it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be good enough for me. Because just having the peaches should be enough. All right, now we're going to stick this in the oven. Um, on about 350. And I'm going to cook it for about 40 minutes. And, and, and as you know, in case you guys don't know, I have a double oven. So I'm going to put this at the bottom. Because uh, with these double ovens, they tend to go out if you do one side more than the other. So I try to move it around, especially since that one needs to bake at the top and bottom. All right, you guys, so that's all I have for you for now. When you use peaches like this, because I've opened up the drawer, read it. It should say go in the refrigerator, and it does. Refrigerate after opening. Because there's some stuff that we put in the refrigerator after we open it, and you don't have to. And if you read, like, a prime example would be, um, let's see, A1 steak sauce. We're so used to opening stuff that we try to look on here and see if it says refrigerate after opening. And this one says refrigerate after opening for best quality. But how many of you guys go and eat a nice steak and A1 is already sitting out anyway? So the catch is once you open it, you don't want to take forever to finish using it or it will go bad. In a, in a restaurant, they go pretty fast. They're always having to fill up a new one. I also use this Heinz 57 on my stuff too. Now this one just tells you the best if used by a certain date. It does not say it needs to go into the refrigerator. Again, this is another one that sits out on the table. Now, depending on how I feel, I would stick this in the refrigerator because some of the stuff that's in it should be refrigerated, like the tomato puree. You know, when you get ketchup, it says to refrigerate after opening. But again, when you're sitting in a restaurant and you look at the table, what's already out there? Ketchup. All right. I just want to share those little things with you guys. Um, please feel free to comment below. If you didn't like it, you can still comment below. You know I don't really care. As long as this stuff come out tasting good to me, that's my main concern. If we worry about what other people think all the time, we'll never get nothing done. So, I'm going to start putting my stuff up. I'm cleaning up after myself. So the only dishes I should have is the ones that's coming out of this oven. I did have a little bit of my stick of butter left. I'm just going to fold that back away and put it in the refrigerator. And that's pretty much all I can do for right now. This is a new item um sugar i'm used to having containers to put this stuff in but when i moved i chose not to put up bring all my containers again try not to touch the box like if you just use the sugar try not to touch it all on the outside because you know that this sugar will attack attract ants all day long so be careful about that me since i don't have any containers to put it in oh no Since I don't have any containers to put in there. There we go. Try to make sure there's not too much air in there. And seal it up. And then stick it back in the cabinet. Alright, so putting everything away. You ready to wash my dishes? Invest in one of these because uh, sometimes your hands feel too slick, wet. 
This opens it up perfectly. There's things that, that sometimes you just can't get open. That thing just works. This is my dish rag. <laughs> this is my towel I keep on the stove. Uh-oh. And then now I got to do is clean this up. And I am pretty much done until my pie comes out. Other than washing these dishes, which I got to start on. All right, you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I hope you guys have a good one. And let me see if I see any messages. All right. And hi. I want to offer promotions of your channel viewers, followers, views, chopped bots. The, I'm not paying for any viewers. I care. I could care less if I get one view. I'm not. I don't see the purpose in doing that. Because you know what? At the end of this day, the reason I need to do this is so I can remember. What if I forget how to make peach cobbler with biscuits? Well, now I got a video I can go back and watch. Yeah, makes sense. All right, you guys. You have a great day. And thanks for watching. This is SJ here with Real Beauty, Real Food, and Real Life. Please hit that like comment, you guys. I do appreciate that when you do it. And I will see you guys next time. If you feel like you want to see more videos, you know, comment, let me know. I'm always cooking something, but I'm trying to not cook as much. So if you guys caught one of my videos, I did make um, an Alfredo chicken and shrimp sauce. And it was so good. OMG. And I put it over cream of wheat. Because here... The famous thing is shrimp and grits. Well, grits was always gritty to me when I came up. But, you know, they're better now that I'm older. But I still love cream of wheat more than I love grits. So I tried it over that, put it over that. And I'm like, oh, hell yes. I could do a restaurant with that. That's how good it was. Um, I went to New Berlin Fish and Oysters, and that's where I had it. So if you get a chance to go out to New Berlin Fish and Oysters in uh, Jacksonville, yeah. I even I even put a review on Yelp for them. So, and they didn't even ask. All right, you guys. Thanks for coming out to the channel. You guys have a blessed weekend. God bless. If you have a loved one out there, make sure you take time out and reach out and say, I love you while you can. Don't wait till they gone and say it because it defeats the purpose. Remember that because that's what people don't remember. Give me my flowers while I'm still living. Because when I'm gone, I'm gone. It just makes sense, you guys. To eat, teach one, preach one. You guys.